Hello from Chile, I'm Jose Abel, civil engineer, and we're going to continue today with the series on using GMesh to OpenSeas to merge GMesh with OpenSeas and do some fancy finite element analysis. Now, I recently conducted a, a, a little poll in my community tab on my YouTube channel and asked you guys what the next video should be, and the whopping results with three, vo with three votes was uh, stress post-processing. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I've added new code into the GMesh to OpenSeas repository, so you'd need to update your code in order to be able to do this example. Now, I'm going to base this example. Here are the poll results. Uh, so uh, next, the next video is going to be the one on eigenvalue analysis, and uh, I'll do another poll for, for the next one. So if you want to stay, if you want to control what I do next time, just uh, make sure you pay attention to the polls. Anyway, let's go. So I'm going to base this uh, video off of uh, the second video I did on the GMesh to OpenC series where we analyzed this little beam, right? Uh, we were doing post-processing and, and doing it. This was a simple beam that we analyzed using GMesh. Uh, the, the whole point of that video was doing the modeling and doing a little bit of automation on the side of the post-processing. Anyway, so let's start with example two, which is the code uh, from the example I just mentioned. I'm just going to call that example four for the fourth video in this series. Uh, I was playing around with some stuff earlier, so I had a version of the example four. So uh, if I run example four, you'll see that uh, in this case, it just replicates the results from before. So now what we want to do is we want to create a view that uh, shows the color to be the stress at each element. And this is useful for analysis. This is going to be a quick video. We're going to talk about a little bit of how the final element works. So I pushed a new function into the main repo. We have to go here after the, analy the analysis. Instead of okay displaying the nodes, which was that part of the code, and visualizing the displacements, let's get rid of all this stuff. We're now going to use a function called Visualize LA response. And now, if you know your OpenSeas PY, uh, under the hood, we need to call for each element the LA response function. And that one, what it's going to do, it's going to compute the response at each element. So what this function does is you give it a list of elements, and it's going to iterate that process, automate a little bit that process, and show you the view. It works just like the visualize displacement function. So it receives, as a first argument, the GMesh model like so, so that it can, we can visualize on that. And then as a second argument, we're going to give it the tetrahedron element tags. Now, if you don't remember or you, or you haven't seen the, the video before, the tetrahedron elements come from, uh, from here. So the tet element list, so this is a list of all the tags that belong, that are tetrahedrons. And I'm getting that as a renaming of the valid variable element tags that is coming from the get elements and nodes in physical groups. So we're looking at the solid physical group, extracting the elements and renaming that variable to TED element tags. The reason we were renaming it is because we're doing a second call to that function and uh, doing something else with that so that we can preserve the, the variable. So we give it the GMesh model, we give it the element tags, and then what comes next is element dependent. So this is the argument for the LA response function in GMesh, sorry, in OpenSeas. So that one is going to be dependent on what type of element you're using. In this case, we're going to ask for the stresses. So I'm going to just ask for the stresses. Let me show you the documentation in GMesh, in OpenSeas real quick. I'm going to do a search. I'm going to do a quick Google search here for uh, OpenSeas, uh, the Ford node tetrahedron, Ford node tetrahedron. There we go. And it's going to take you to the wiki by default. We can also look at it, the read the docs. Let's do both. Yeah, this one opened. Okay, so this doesn't have the information right now, but the other one does. So here, in what you can see in the documentation, let me adjust a little. Bit. Oh, did I just close that? No. Reopen closed window. Here we go. Thank you, Google Chrome, for implementing that function. So let me quickly adjust the size. And down here, so the valid queries to four node, four node tetrahedron element include forces, stresses, which is what we're going to be calling it. So we would be calling, uh, let's see, OpenSeas PY, LR response. Let's look at the documentation real quick. What does it say? So this is the function that, that gets called uh, behind the scenes. It's the LR response function with the element tag. And as args, I'm using the stresses string. We could use different things there, depending on the element, again. So that's, that's what goes in here. 
And if I just simply run this, as before, what I get as an output now is this, is actually six views because the stresses have six components. So let's uh, fix a little bit of this. Uh, we can see all the, the, all the stresses compo stress components. And uh, here the name is automatic. I'm going to set a few things here so that it looks nicer. So I should uh, set in here the new view name parameter. So new view name, I'm going to call it stress like that. And then the other thing I'm going to do is uh, as follows. I am going to just enable the first view. So instead of visualizing everything, I'm going to uh, set for each view number, I'm going to set the option visible to zero. So it's going to disable all the views except view zero, which is the first one and should correspond to the stress component sigma xx. So let's run that. And we can see here uh, stress five is the name of this view and post processing. Oh, I'm getting stress five. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted this one. That is the that is the first component. So let's let's fix this. I should be doing range from range uh, two to I guess um, six seven. Okay, so these 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 lists are uh, the views are zero based. That's why I had that error. It's an off by one error. So stress zero, I can see that's the only enabled one. And you can see here uh, the stresses. So as you would expect, this is a self-weight analysis. So you see, uh, we, let's adjust a little bit the, the view. Let's uh, change from the default view to custom. So we're going to say Gmesh plot me between, let's say 400,000. So that's uh, 400. Uh, mega pas uh, pascals, so 400 pascals in the end. Okay, so we, we are setting the color bar down here. Let's, uh, let's see here. So we're going from plus 4,000 to negative 4,000. So you can see compression at the top, tension at the bottom here. The axis is reversed. You can, you can control the colors here in Gmesh. I can invert the map, I think. Invert, I think it's just pressing I. There we go. I. So if I press I, I'm going to invert the map. And if we have uh, the values here be the same but with opposite signs, then we're going to get the zero at the green value. So that's nice to have a symmetric color bar here. So this looks awful uh, because the tetrahedron element, the four node tetrahedron is a constant strain or constant stress uh, tetrahedron. So it assumes that the stress is constant inside. Constant inside. So let me, let, let me make a, a little quick section cut here the whole elements yeah for each of the elements each element is painted uh, color so this is a really 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 bad element and uh, so let's refine before I refine let me show you some tricks we can do here we can call the plugins and we can uh, apply the smooth plugin onto this view view zero run and that'll smooth out the the stress values and give you a nicer view this is good because it averages the stresses at the nodes and that gives you Believe it or not, a better quality solution for the stresses than the one that just comes out of, of Gmesh. So, oh, sorry, from OpenSeas. So that's a good thing to do, so it's smooth out. And then another thing that's nice is so that you can get a nice contour plot. Let's uh, change here the view type to filled ISO values. And we can, we can set the amount of, uh, of bands. 10 is usually a nice, it, it, if it's a, an odd number, you'll get the, uh, the green color as zero. In this case, we're not seeing much of zero. So it, it considers that everything here is zero. You can play around with the, with the axis limits and, and you'll get a little bit of a better view. Let's do that. Yeah, this looks a bit better. Let's go down to two, 200 to 200. Yeah, that looks better. Let's, uh, okay, but this, all of this stuff can be automated if you, if you set the options here through the Gmesh interface. I'm just gonna show you what happens when, when you refine. So we're gonna go, need to go into the example two geometry file, Gmesh, let's go here, and with this I'll end to so the example two geometry file. And in here, when I mesh with three, I get this very coarse mesh. A very simple solution to uh, refine the mesh is to go here in the general tab and just uh, bring down this, the element size factor. So let's uh, bring it down to a half. I am just clicking here and dragging. That's nice about Gmesh. 
and I remesh. So let's go one, two, three. There you, you can see it's a finer mesh. Let's go a little bit finer, like this, one, two, three. No, a bit more, point three. Okay, so we can do a little bit of stress analysis with that. So after that, I go to mesh and save. It's gonna ask me if I wanna replace, save. And I just rerun the analysis. Now it might take a little bit long, sorry. Wrong command, this one. And it's saying now that uh, key error, there's nothing in the, sorry, I was doing element, example four, uh, example two. Now this should be working, so let's, uh, Let's start over what happened here. Example 2.msh, maybe I didn't save the tetrahedrons. It looks like it, so mesh visibility 3D. Yeah, I do have the tetrahedrons and the physical groups. For some reason, I'm not having the fixed physical group. Maybe I didn't save last time. So let's go in there and make sure that we have the fixed physical group. Visibility only a solid physical group. Okay, so let's add that missing physical group. Sorry about that, a little fixed and uh, select, no, not that one. Undo last selection, let's do this surface and on this other side, this surface. And now mesh, let's uh, change the mesh size. General, uh, I think we're using 0.3 like this. And one, two, three, like this. And uh, save, save the mesh. Save again, replace it, okay. Close, run the example. I should be getting results now, example 4.py. No fixed, what is going on? So the example two, sorry about this, so fixed. We should be having, huh, what's going on? No, we, we did have the fixed physical group, but for some reason, it was not working out. So may, let me redefine the physical groups. Something happened. I think I changed versions of Gmesh between examples. So let me do the physical groups one last time. I'm probably losing all of you at this point, but uh, we want to stay here so that uh, you see the final result and what, what the, the effect of mesh refining is. So let's add a volume. Let's call that solid. These are also errors that you might jump into. So this is how I tend to solve them. Okay, so let's go here and add a surface physical group, call that fixed, and select the surfaces, this one and that one in the back over there. And cool, let's uh, queue to abort and then see, make sure that we have the physical surface apply. We should see the both, both the ends, that's good. Okay, uh, let's now mesh with a mesh size of 0.3. We'll discuss other options for meshing uh, or for refining meshes later on. So let's save this and export the mesh. Mesh, here we go. Save the mesh. You want to replace it. I do want to replace it. And then let's open a new terminal here and uh, sample 4.py. Here we go. That worked. So maybe I'll chop that part of the video out or just leave it. So let's go here into, okay, close this other window and uh, post-processing, I'm getting stress zero. And in here, let's uh, apply the smoothing. I'm gonna apply the smoothing to all the views. Smooth plugin, run, so I get a nice smooth view. And then continuous map, let's go for filled ISO values and uh, custom, let's go for minus three, th 300,000, not three million like this and 300,000. Yeah, that looks nice. So compression at the top, uh, uh, tension at the bottom, positive values. We can go to the color map, press I to invert the color map, and then we get something that makes a little bit more sense. Let's look at the other stress components while we're at it. And we can see the stress one. So stress one would be uh, stress in the Y direction. So you can see that in the Y direction, there's not much going on except at the, at the ends stress concentrations and then stress Z is also mainly at the at mainly at the edges but you can see there's some stuff going on inside let's let's explore a little bit here what's going on uh, continuous map yes let's go for the continuous map but custom so maybe let's bring this down to hundred thousand like that 
and not adapt the visualization grid. Let's go like this. Yeah, so mostly at the ends, but you can kind of see that it's being pulled at the bottom and you have some compression at the top in terms of what the Z vertical stress is doing. Let's switch the color map a little bit so that it makes sense. And then let's take a look at the shear stress components. This one is stress uh, X, Y, so it's in plane stress. We don't need this one. This one is in the in the Y Z plane, so this one is not also not very relevant. But this is the one. This is the nice one. So this one is the shear stress in the X Z plane, and this one you can see uh, it's uh, it's negative here. So it's basically uh, if if you remember your your shear diagram, your shear diagram is going to be uh, negative, uh, negative on this side, positive. Well, it depends on how you draw it. We in Chile, we, we do things a little bit backwards from what people do in the US or maybe other places. But the point is here is that the, the shear changes sign uh, about the axis of symmetry of this problem. So you can see that you get uh, the other side. And the other thing is that uh, you get a parabolic distribution, which is not that nicely resolved here. Let's take a look at the Filled isovalues mode. And for this one, uh, yeah, let's just leave it like this. Yeah. So it's it looks parabolic, but it's not not quite. So you you'd need a, a better discretization. Let's do the element outlines. So the stresses are going to be constant within each element, except that uh, we've applied the smoothing operator to get a little bit of a better distribution. Okay. So that'll end the video for today. This is, uh, has been stress analysis in OpenSeas and Gmesh. Let me know if there's anything else that you want me to discuss. Uh, comment down below and press like and subscribe if you haven't, if you feel that I've earned that. Uh, so see you next time. Bye from Chile.